on this auspicious occasion of celebration of the National Day of China, which we are celebrating together with our Chinese brethren, organized by the All Pakistan Chinese Overseas Youth Federation. And we have in this hall a group gathering of distinguished and diverse personalities from different walks of life, both from Pakistan and China. I would like to compliment Asma Saiba for dynamism and vigor, and also Nayib, because she's one of our very eminent uh, journalists. And I see Farooq Saab and Tariq Saab also, and other journalists, and uh, who are here, and people who have come uh, also from here, sir. Thank you, Osman Saab, most welcome. On 1st of October, 1949, it was in Beijing, in the Tiananmen Square, and Tiananmen means Gate of Heavenly Peace, where, and that was the beginning of the success of the Chinese Revolution. The Communist Party of China, which led the struggle for rejuvenation under the leadership of Chairman Mao was formed in July 1921. And they had to go through a historic struggle. Liberation from the yoke of feudalism, for liberation from the yoke of foreign hegemony entailed a lot of sacrifices. And if you want to understand today's China, you have to understand China's that I have had first-hand experience of this historic transition of China in the last four decades. I first went to China as a 16-year-old student of FC College, second year, in the 1970s. And I saw the China of Chairman Mao. The Chinese China is well connected with the outside world. And there are three or four ingredients of China's strategic culture, which are unique because China is the only country in the history of mankind which has risen peacefully without occupation, without aggression, without conquest, without colonization. So just briefly, what are these ingredients of China's strategic culture that we talk about? First, the Silk Road. We say Urdu in Urdu, we say it in Urdu. In 2000 years ago, the Silk Road started from China, the city of Xi'an, and it connected what is now Pakistan what is now Iran, what is now the Middle East with Europe, with Venice, with other places. And the Silk Road was the first instance of globalization connecting countries and civilizations and continents through commerce and also culture. And that is why the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said 1400 years ago, seek knowledge even if you have to go to China because China even 1400 years ago was an advanced, educated civilization. So that is one. China has always been about globalization, about connectivity. And today, under the leadership of President Xi Jinping, the Silk Road has been revived through the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI of which CPAC, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, is the pillar, the pivot, and the flagship. And China, in the last 10 years, when BRI was launched, has invested $1 trillion in 3,000 projects, leading to 450,000 jobs being generated all over. And we know the CPEX success story. 
The second important ingredient about China's strategic culture which shapes their vision and their worldview is the Great Wall, which is built over centuries. And what is the Great Wall? It is protective, it is defensive against outside aggression. So that shows China has a peaceful worldview, peaceful intentions, more defensive, more protective. That was the game. The third component of the strategic culture is the Long March under the leadership of the Communist Party. In 1934 and 35, thousands of kilometers, 100,000 people started off in the Long March under the leadership of the Communist Party of China, Chairman Mao. Only 20,000 survived. But the Long March shows China's patience, persistence, perseverance, a never give up philosophy. That they say, okay, once we have embarked on a path, to Chin ke hawale se tarikh mein dekhe, to unka ek bada vaze raha hai, ke apna difa karna, jo great wall ki embarked karte hai, China wahed mulke jise tarakki ki hai, o badi taakat bana hai, puraman tarikhe se, kisi ke khlaaf jahariyat ni ki, kisi ke mulk par kabza ni kiya, किसी के मुल्क के खिलाफ कोई कॉलोनी नहीं बनाई अपनी कुबत के साथ मेहनत के साथ सलाहियत के साथ क्योंकि चीन वाहिद मुल्क है जो एक मुल्क नहीं है एक सिविलाइजेशन है 5000 साल पुरानी इसकी زبان 5000 साल पुरानी से लिखी जा रही है तो उस हवाले से चीन का जो आजकल का जो एक क्लीदी किरदार है वो बहुत अहम एंड वी इन पाकिस्तान आर वेरी फॉर्चूनेट that China is not just our no great northern neighbor, China is our best friend, China is a strategic partner, and China has stood by Pakistan on all our core interests, on all occasions. Har martaba, jab mokha mila, Chin ne Pakistan ka saathiya, chitan ki tarah khada. Har issue par, har mokhe par. Or mein baat karo, har issue par, हर मौके पर फाटक हो जाए बेरुनी दबाव हो जाए कोविड-19 हो जाए कश्मीर का मसला हो जाए पाकिस्तान के अपने हवाले से जो कोर इंटरेस्ट है दिफा के हवाले से वो भी हो जाए हर हवाले से चीन आपका साथ देता है और हमें भी बड़ा फखर है कि हम भी चीन के एंड वी आल्सो आर वेरी प्राउड ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट ऑन एवरी कोर इंटरेस्ट ऑफ चाइना Pakistan is one country which stands steadfast with China, supporting China on all its core interests, whether it's the territorial integrity, unity and sovereignty of China, whether it's the paramount role of the Communist Party of China in Chinese uh, political system, whether it's the peaceful rise of China, whether it's the one China policy on Taiwan, whether it's the issue of Xinjiang, whether it's the issue of Tibet, whether it's the issue of Hong Kong, whether it's the issue of South China Sea, whether it's the Belt and Road Initiative, whether it's the Global Development Initiative, GDI, or the Global Security Initiative, uh, GSI, or the Global Civilization Initiative, GCI, launched by President Xi Jinping, we stand with China as China stands with us. Ladies and gentlemen, इस वक्त दुनिया में एक बहुत बड़ी तब्दीली आ रही है। अलामा इकबाल ने फरमाया था नब्बे साल पहले, देख मशरक से उबरते हुए सूरज को देख, गरा खाब चीनी संभलने लगे, हिमाला के चश्मे उबलने लगे, गया दौर सरमाया दारी गया, तमाशा दिखा के मदारी गया। The great poet of the East who gave the vision for Pakistan made a historic prediction 90 years ago. See the sun rising in the east. He predicted the rise of the Asian century. And he also predicted the rise of China 90 years ago, where he talked of springs of hope emerging in the Himalayas and the great Chinese nation rising from slumber. And that was prediction 
विच इज कम ट्रू टू डे और इस हवाले से तारीख के हवाले से ताकत का जो आलमी तोजन है इकतसादी और सियासी और मैं सकाफती भी शामिल करूंगा वो मगरब से मशरक की तरफ मुंतकिल हो रहा है द बैलेंस ऑफ इकोनॉमिक कल्चरल एंड पोलिटिकल पावर इज शिफ्टिंग फ्रॉम द वेस्ट टू द ईस्ट इन द ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट द एशियन सेंचुरी इन विच चाइना पीसफुल राइज and pakistan's role are all pivotal in this new emerging scenario we welcome that but i would also like to warn kuch kubate hain jo nayi sar jang ki baat karte hain jo containment ki baat karte hain jo cold war ki baat karte hain jo tazad taqseem tasadum ki baat karte hain hum is soch ko rad kar क्योंकि 21वीं सदी में एशिया अब नई सर्द जंग का मुतहमल नहीं हो सकता एंड वी रिजेक्ट एनी टॉक ऑफ अ न्यू कोल्ड वॉर ऑफ कंटेनमेंट ऑफ कॉन्फ्रेंटेशन ऑफ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट बिकॉज इन द ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी द एशियन सेंचुरी वी कैन नॉट अफोर्ड दैट काइंड ऑफ अ माइंड सेट विच टॉक्स ऑफ डिवाइडिंग एशिया and there is no threat from china china is a peaceful country china's world view is based on promoting equality diversity inclusivity in global politics they are not trying to impose their hegemony or their philosophy or their values on any other country they believe in win win cooperation and the belt and road initiative is a shining example of this win win cooperation where over 150 countries and 32 organizations are there aur hame bada fakhr bhi hai aur hum bade main samajhta hu khush kismat hai ki cheen ne pakistan mein us waqt investment ki 10 saal pehle cpec mein jab koi mulk na maghrib ka na musliman ek dhela pakistan ko lagane ko taiyar tha क्योंकि उस वक्त दहशत गर्दी थी अदम इसने काम था इस खत्ते में अफगानिस्तान की सूरत हाल अमरीकी फौज भी थी 26 बिलियन डॉलर्स ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट 8,000 मेगावाट्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी ओवर 200,000 जॉब्स जनरेटेड 28,000 पाकिस्तानी स्टूडेंट्स स्टडिंग इन चाइना ओवर 600 किलोमीटर्स ऑफ हाईवेज and uh, roads over uh, 800 kilometers of uh, uh, new transmission lines you can see gwadar port and since the overseas uh, this pakistan uh, overseas chinese youth federation is also led i think is example of good example of women power i will say that in thar if you go thanks to cpec thanks to china support we see women thari women driving dumper trucks mining is taking place coal is becoming generated into electricity and the electricity is going to the national grid so this is an example of the cpex success story and this is also an example of a local community empowerment both leadership of pakistan and china believe that the future will be shaped by youth and women chairman mao said women hold half the sky and qaid azam mohammad ali jinnah the great leader of pakistan the founder of pakistan also said that unless the youth and women are mobilized we will not get an a free state and independent state so this is the commonality the future belongs to the youth and as chairman mao rightly said nothing is hard in this world if you dare to scale the heights and we have seen it the success story of china before our own eyes how china moved forward how china progressed and built a new society a better peaceful and prosperous china and we hope 
that we can also contribute to building this new community of shared destiny along with China during the coming decades. Inshallah. Long live Pakistan-China friendship and a special congratulations to our Chinese friends. We share in their joy, we share in their happiness and it's also the Mid-Autumn Festival. Congratulations to you on that also. Thank you so much and all the best to the leadership of the women's leadership which is doing a great job, mashallah. And thank you to the media for their support. Thank you very much.